السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today إن شاء الله we will be starting with ayah 27 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَلَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and recite O Muhammad what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is no changer of, the, of his word and never will you find in other than him a refuge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite the Quran. And this is an order for us to recite the Quran. So when you are uh, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are reading his book, you feel you feel something, something special connection. You feel a special connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you read his words. So what is this book? This book, this Quran is the source of life. It governs everything justly. And it's full of wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his ayahs, put his uh, Quran in several ways for us so that uh, we have, for example, when we read the story of Musa alayhi salam, this, this story comes over and over and over in the Quran. But every time you read it, you feel that you are reading a new story. Every time you read, you read this story, you feel that there is something new. You never get bored of reading the same story over and over and over. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this book, he gave us the law, he gave us the program, he gave us the system that we have to follow in our lives so we can live happily, so we can reach the, the, uh, the end happily and safely. Just follow the orders, just follow what's in this holy book. And try always to get a good bond with the Quran. Try always to get a good connection with the Quran. And you can do that by reciting it every day. Just have, have a few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes every day just to read Quran. If you can read one ayah, read two ayahs. If you can read one page, do it two pages. Get a stronger connection to the holy book of Allah and try to understand its meanings. And this will help you focusing in your prayers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَاتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ when you are in a different, in a difficult situation, just recite the book of Allah. Quran will be your protection. The Quran will shelter you like the thief sheltered those young men who run away with their religion. So this is what Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did whenever he had a problem, whenever he was seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would spend some time with the Quran. So nothing, 
no one will change the words of the Quran. لا مبدل لكلماته. No one will be able to change the words of the Quran. No one will be able to add a, a letter, not a word, a letter to the word of the uh, to the uh, uh, book of Allah. No one can delete a word from the book of Allah. Allah revealed it. He he is going to preserve it and to keep it as is until the day of judgment. No changes. So no one will change the words of Allah. Allah uh, uh, has promised that. The Quran will be the same from the time it was revealed until the day of judgment. You will never find other than him. If you need shelter, you just seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will never find other than him, other than Allah for refuge. If you need something, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most generous. He's the one who listens to you without any comments, without any uh, uh, looks, without, without anything. He's listening to you. If you have something that, that you need help, wake a little bit wake up a little bit before fajr prayer and everyone is asleep you are alone with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then at that time just sit talk to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your wudu pray to rak'ahs and talk to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walan tajida min dunihi multahada واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا And keep yourself patient by being with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening, seeking his countlessness, seeking his pleasure. And let not your eyes pass beyond them, desiring adornment of the worldly life. And do not obey those whose heart we have made blind, heedless of our remembrance. and who follows his desire and whose affair is ever negligent. When Quraysh wanted to Ibn Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to stop his call to Islam, they tried their best with several methods, several ways. If you want money, we will give you money. If you want women, we will get you married to the best and to the most beautiful woman. If you want this, we will give it to you. If you want that, we will give it to you. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, I was not sent to you for any of these things. I was sent to you with haq, with the truth, and this is what's going on. Nothing will change what I was sent to you. For, uh, uh, everything, everything is nothing in compared with what, uh, what I was sent to you. So when they knew that they cannot convince him, they said, okay, let's go to his uncle. He might be closer to him. He might convince him. But we all know what he said to his uncle. Wallahi, law wada'u al-shamsa fi yameeni wal-qamara fi yasari ala an atruka hadha al-amra ma taraktu. By Allah, if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will never leave what I have been sent with. So at the end, they accepted that to tell him that, okay, those people who are so poor We cannot sit with them. So if you get rid of these people, then we will we will accept. Wasbir nafsak. This is the order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. 
So those poor people are called Ahlu Sufa. Who are Ahlu Sufa? They are the poor people of Muhajireen, of the immigrants who came to Medina. They had no shelter. They, they left everything. They left, they left their food, their uh, clothes, their uh, wealth, their money, their lands. They left everything just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they stayed in the um, uh, mosque in Masjid al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the only thing they would do is seeking knowledge, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading Quran, uh, uh, working on hadith. And they, they, they were the blessed people. In our days, there are in the, uh, the masjid of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Al-Haram al-Madani. There, are, there is a group of people who are called Al-Mujawirun. So those people, they stay in a rawda sharifa. They read the Quran. They make salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all day long. They don't have job. They don't have anything. They are at the masjid of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as long as they are allowed to stay in. And they are called al-mujawirun. So since the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this group of people is there in the masjid. So when we see these people nowadays, we should be good to them. We should, we should know that those are the true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not look, at, uh, look them down because of their poverty. Of, no. Those are blessed people. Their, their dua is accepted. And normally rich people go to them for dua when they have any hardship in their lives. So be patient, yeah, Muhammad, be patient with those poor low class people who make dua all the time in the morning and in the evening. So Umayyah, Umayyah bin Khalaf and other and others of the elite of Quraysh came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him, if you get rid of Bilal, Abu Dhar, Ibn Mas'ud, who were all of the people of Ahlu Sufa, whom we, uh, whom were looked down uh, by those elite people of Quraysh. So they, so then, if you if you kick the, these people out, then we will join you. And they found themselves above those poor people. They couldn't accept that they are equal to them. To, to them. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed this verse and other verses to assure to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that if people make fun of you, but you need to be patient with these, with these poor people. Even if people, if those rich people uh, did not want them, so you don't listen to them. Those are the people who always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who continue who constantly pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not only that, you Muhammad, but wala ta'du anhum. Don't even move your gaze beyond those poor people. Look at their iman and taqwa. Look at the iman and taqwa they have in their heart. And not to the wealth and faith of the people of Quraysh. This is the, the, the gaze of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, we want a gaze from you. The gaze is, uh, is uh, something that would help the believer. So this gaze from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to ease the, the hard life that those be, poor people are living. And this is a lesson to us. 
treat those poor, treat the poor people uh, well, so that you will make them feel good. You will make them forget what they are living in. So if you don't practice patience by being with this group, then Ya Muhammad, to read to Zinat al Hayat al Dunya, you will you will be someone who would desire, who would want the atonement of this worldly life. But do you think Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to, would listen to those people uh, of Quraysh? Of course not. He will never think of getting rid of Sayyidina Bilal or Sayyidina Abu Huraira or, or those, those true believers. So he will never get rid of, the, of them, neither of others who say, uh, who for the sake uh, of those rich people, he will not get rid of those poor people. But the wisdom here is that we have to be careful. As I just mentioned, we have to treat them, the, the, the poor people well. And, though, and everywhere and all the time we find poor people. So we have to treat them with love, care, respect. We are, and we are really the ones who are addressed here in this ayah. In fact, some sick people actually, what happened, they noticed how those poor people are taken care, well taken care of. So uh, people would give them charity, people would give them food, cloth, and other things. And they noticed that these poor people have left everything of this dunya for the sake of Allah, but even though they are getting a lot from people. So they said, okay, why we do not pretend that we are poor and get similar help. For these sick people, we say, be careful. Allah is overwatching. Allah knows intentions and Allah knows realities. And it happens that sometimes you give charity, then you get some doubts. Uh, are these people really in need? So if you are, if you have the doubt and you cannot uh, be sure, just remember that Allah knows the intentions. Don't say I'm not giving because I'm not sure. No, give. Allah will reward you for your sincere intentions to help and, and for your uh, for you obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he orders you to give and you are giving but at the same time he also knows whether they deserve it or not and whether he bestows his blessings on what they get or not so just be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't think of anything else so ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا. Do not follow that group whose heart we have made blind of our remembrance. The poor group is making dua all the time, morning and evening. And we, we see that Allah sends people to take care of those poor people. So their sustenance will be given to them, even they are sitting doing nothing in this dunya. And this is what uh, the explanation of Ya dunya man khadamani fakhdumi wa man khadamaki fastakhdimi. Ya dunya, life, this worldly life. Whoever serves me, so uh, this is uh, Allah is saying it. Whoever serves me, then serve him, give him. But whoever serves you, 
whoever is clinged to you, whoever wants dunya and wants the pleasure of dunya, seeking nothing except dunya, then you use that person. You make him not happy. You make him just want to run and get more, run and get more. So, the other group do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they follow their desires. So their, their goal is not to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want and to fulfill what the, he wants to obey him, but they 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 are lost those people are lost they are losers they are lost they don't know what they want they are following desires only they are following hawa they are following their nafs they are following their ego but they are not doing what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want them to do وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ So now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has said these ayahs, has mentioned these ayahs, say, Ya Muhammad, the truth is from your Lord. So he is talking to those people. Your Lord. And, rem and just... The, the the word your uh, attracts our attention and reminds us that those uh, non-believers, when they were asked who created the skies, they said Allah. Who created the earth, they said Allah. Who created this, they said Allah. So they believe in Allah, but they don't want to believe in the message. This is the truth from your Lord whom you accepted. So whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him disbelieve. This is the truth from your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the hadith Qudsi, Ya ibadi law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu ala qalbi atqa rajulin wahidin minkum ma zada thalika fi mulki shay'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to all his uh, servants, to all the, the, the people he created. And he said, if all of you, the first until the last, and all the ints, all the jinn, everyone are helping the best person that will not increase my kingdom. And if all of you were supporting that uh, bad person, the, 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 the one who does not do anything good, that will also not decrease anything of my kingdom. If everybody, every one of you were in line and each one of you asked me something فسألوني فأعطيت فسألني فأعطيت كل واحد مسألته ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل البحر so if each and every one of you asked me for something and I gave everyone their request whatever they asked for that's, that will not decrease my kingdom The only thing that might be if you get a needle and you immerse it in the ocean and you take it out, the, uh, the, this just little bit of water that sticks to it 
this is how it is for me to give everybody. But my kingdom is my kingdom. Nothing will affect my kingdom. Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum. It's only your deeds that I am I am counting for you now, that I'm recording for you now. And then I will show it to you. You will get your records. Whoever finds good, whoever finds that he is a winner, then thank he has to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever finds other than that. He should only blame himself. It's your deeds. And then there will be either a reward or a threat or a punishment. So you wanted a proof and I gave it to you. You, you came asking uh, mm, uh, Prophet Muhammad about the, uh, the story of the people of the cave, and I gave it to you, and I told you the, the story. He told you the story. So you wanted the answers to your questions, and Muhammad answered your questions. Now what you do, what do you want to do now? The truth is from your Lord, and you can either believe or or just keep denying. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens now the losers and promises those who obey and win. So it will be either an evil place to live in or it will be a marvelous place to enjoy. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Then who, whoever Whosoever wills, let him believe, and whosoever wills, let him disbelieve. So, what will happen? Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Baqarah, La ikraha fi deen. There should be no compulsion in acceptance of the religion. Everyone has their intellect, so they are free to do whatever they want. They can live for this dunya. They can live happily here and be rich there. Or they can be happy here, uh, happy there. And e even though they are enjoying this dunya. Because they know, they follow the book. They follow the Quran. They follow the orders of the Quran. They follow the catalog that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for a happy life and a happy life. Uh, life after. So verily, we have prepared for the wrongdoers a fire. But what type of fire is it? Whose walls shall be surrounding them? So the fire will be surrounding those who transgressed. So those who did wrong deeds, those who, who were not obeyers, those who denied, those who belied. And if they ask for a drink in hellfire while they are there, they will be granted their wish, but they will be given boiling water. It was boiling to the degree that will scald their faces. Normally when you say if someone if someone is asking for something and you are giving it to him, then it means you are doing something good to that person. But those people of hellfire, when they ask for a drink, they are given, but they are giving a torment with that. It will cut their intestines. It will destroy them. 
بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقة Terrible is this drink and terrible and evil is the place to live in. So imagine the type of torture they will be living in. And the thing is that this life that they will be living is perpetual forever. This punishment is not going to end. It will not even going to decrease. On the contrary, it will increase. Whenever they are burned, whenever their, their skin is burned, whenever their uh, organs are burned, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a new skin and they will be burnt again and again and again and again. This will happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want our heart to feel that heavy. And after mentioning the state of these doomed ones, he mentioned, he mentions the blessed believers and he mentions what he has prepared for those who obeyed him in dunya, for those who followed his orders, for those who followed Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for those who connected with Allah, for those who connected with the Quran, for those who connected with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا so indeed, as for those who believed and did righteous deeds. So let's stop for a second. Amanu wa amilu salihat. They, these two things, belief and doing good deeds, righteous deeds, they go together. Iman without doing good deeds is not enough. Doing good deeds without being a Muslim is not enough. Iman and faith together. Faith and righteous deeds together. So indeed, as for those who believed and did righteous deeds, certainly we shall not make the reward of anyone to be lost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. He's the most just. And he says, in Surah uh, Az-Zalzala, he says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Whoever does a speck weight of good, will get its reward. And on the contrary, of course, whoever does any speck of bad, he will get his punishment. And we have always to remember, do not, لا تنظر إلى صغر المعصية ولكن انظر إلى من عصيت. Do not look at how small the sin you are going to make is, but look at one important thing. Look at who you have disobeyed. Even if the, if the uh, mistake is so, so small, that's not the issue. The issue is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, amanu wa amilu salihat. And we know that there are so many hadith that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, talks about the best of manners, the best of characters. And he says, the closest of you to me in the day of judgment, those who are the best, uh, who, have the, who, who do the best, good deeds who are who have the best manners and once he was talking to Sayyidina Abu Hurairah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him 
عليك بحسن الخلق يا أبا هريرة فسيدنا أبو هريرة of course understands what he what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says but he asked him and this uh, this question he asked he asked just for us to learn so he said وَمَا حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ what is حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ what is the good manners ya yeah, oh, oh Prophet so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says أَن تُعْطِي مَنْ حَرَمَكْ وَتَصِلُ مَنْ قَطَعَكْ وَتَعْفُ عَمَّنْ ظَلَمَكْ or is what uh, the order he says. So you connect to those who cut you off. And you give those who deprive you. And you forgive those who, mis uh, who do bad things to you. You think this is easy, guys? Do you think that this is not called husnul khuluq, the best of manners? Can you imagine someone who gives, who, who uh, uh, does something very wrong to you and you say, okay, I forgive you. This needs a very pure heart. When someone does something bad to you, you say, I forgive you and you make dua for that person. This is a sound heart. It's not easy. It's not easy to give those who deprive you and giving is not only to give money no feelings they were bad to you but you are good to them this is feeling they they needed some help when nobody could help except you but they were doing so many bad things to you are you going to turn around and say okay i don't know you or are you going to to give your, your hand to them, to take them out of the situation they are living in. So this is husnul khuluq. So whoever does anything good, he will be rewarded. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ittaqu nara walaw bi shiqqi tamra. Fear, fear, fire. They, uh, do something good to, to get yourself away from it, even by giving half of a date. Not a date, half of a date. Ittaqullah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what will happen to those people? Alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat. The people who are um, good believers and who do righteous things. Now, open your heart and get into these words. Imagine yourself in, in enjoying these rewards. And inshallah, we will all be enjoying these things. Those will have gardens of perpetual residence. So this will be their reward for them will be Jannah Adn. So this is a special time, a special place in Jannah called Jannah Adn. What are the what are the things in there? Tajri min tahtihimul anhar. So beneath them, beneath them, rivers will flow. So when when people here in dunya, they will see a nice river, they would go uh, have a picnic there, they will uh, enjoy their time there. It's so, it's so beautiful. يُحَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ ذَهَبْ So they will be adorned therein, in these jannas, with bracelets of gold. وَيَلْبَسُونَ ثِيَابًا خُضْرًا مِنْ سُنْدُسٍ وَإِسْتَبْرَقٍ And they will, they will wear green garments. Garments of fine silk and brocade. So imagine the type of uh, material, the fabric that, that the clothes will be. And a be beautiful, nice green colors. 
So this is what they will be wearing. They will be wearing thick and shiny velvet, green garments. So sundus and istabrak. Muttakiina fiha ala al araik. So they will be reclining therein on adorned cushions. So they will be lying down. They will be resting. They will be enjoying their time. So how good is the reward? And what an excellent place to be in. What an excellent is, how excellent is this reward? And how good is this resting place? So imagine, imagine the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his, for his uh, people. And we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared in this, uh, in this uh, uh, akhirah uh, something, مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ So this is something that the people would never be able to imagine. This is the type of reward that Allah has subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for this, uh, uh, for these winners. So this is how we, our heart now is seeking. This is what our heart is seeking now. This highly um, amazing place of uh, perpetuality. Nothing is going to be decreased. On the contrary, everything will be increased. So now if you have a, just a moment to compare the reward and the punishment. So Allah has shown what will happen in the day after. Allah has uh, given us the true image of what will be there. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whoever can decide for himself, do you, the, does, uh, does he want to be a believer or a non-believer? So to go back to the first ayah, we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to get connected to the Quran. And we know that when we are reading the Quran, we feel that we are in a different world. This is the divine world. So the only thing we say, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to read the Quran. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to be able to understand the Quran. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is giving us the permission to get connected to the Quran. So we say, Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Thanks is for you, Allah. Thanks is suitable to the grace of your face and the greatness of your supreme authority. Ya Allah, we don't know how to thank you. We don't know how to praise you. We cannot praise you the way you deserve to be praised. You have chosen us amongst all your creations to be able to connect to you and to connect to the Quran, to connect to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can't thank you enough, Ya Allah. So we stop here, inshallah. And next time, inshallah, we will be having another story other lessons and uh, other explanations inshallah wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ya rabbana lak alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh